Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. If you like this video and want more like this one all about maps and the world, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. For those who ascribe to a religion, it can be an important part of their culture, their identity and the way they conduct themselves. As such, the religious makeup of a country can significantly impact that nation's attitudes, politics and behaviour. However, with religion declining in many countries, we thought it would be interesting to take a look at where the most religious countries in the world are and which religions dominate which parts of the world. Let's start with the overall religiousness of different countries. It's worth clarifying here that this data reflects the number of people who subscribe to an organised religion, not the number of people who are spiritual or religious in other ways. So based on that, what's the most religious country in the world? Well, using the most recent data from Gallup, 100% of those surveyed in Niger, Sri Lanka, Somalia, Bangladesh and Amman said that religion was important in their lives. Yep, 100%. A whole bunch of other countries had responses in the 90s, with Egypt and Thailand at 97, Nigeria at 96, Kenya 94, Nepal 93, Pakistan 92 and neighbouring India at 90. If we drop down to the 80s then we can find Brazil on 87, South Africa at 85 and Turkey with 82. Now in the 70s we have Poland at 75, Mexico with 73, Portugal and Italy at 72, Greece at 71, and Jamaica with 70. Just slipping into the 60s is the United States with 69, with Argentina at 65, one of the lowest in South America. Entering into the 50s we find Austria with 55, Ireland at 54, and Israel 51%. Spain is the highest of the 40s at 49%, then you've got Taiwan at 45, South Korea 43, Switzerland at 41 and Canada and Germany both at 40. In the 30s we have countries like Bulgaria, Russia and Belarus all at 34, the Netherlands and New Zealand at 33 and Australia and France at 30. In the 20s we find Finland at 28, the UK at 27 and then Japan and Hong Kong at 24. Then the top three least religious countries in the world are Norway at 22, Czechia at 21 and then in third we have Denmark with 19%, Sweden is in second with 17% and the least religious country in the world is Estonia where just 16% of people say that religion is important in their lives. So that's how religious countries are today but is this changing? Well as I alluded to in the intro, the percentage of people who ascribe to a formal religion is falling in many areas of the world, with countries in the west most likely to see quite significant declines. However, that's not necessarily true on a global scale. Today about 1.17 billion people are religiously unaffiliated, and current projections expect this to rise slightly to 1.2 billion by 2060. So is atheism rising? Well no, because religions are rising faster. As such the percentage of the world who's unaffiliated is expected to actually decline from 16% today to 13% in 2060. So which religions are growing the fastest? Which are growing so fast that they're outpacing atheism? Well first we ought to take a look at different religions in more detail and which areas of the world believe different things. For the sake of this section, we're going to be focusing on the dominant religion in each country. Obviously, there's more than one religion in each country. If we take the UK for example, we can see that 59.5% of the population say that they're Christian, making it the dominant but not exclusive religion in the UK. Other groups exist too then, including 25.7% who said they had no religion, 4.4% who are Muslim, 1.3% who are Hindu, 0.7% Sikh, 0.4% Jewish, 0.4% Buddhist and 0.4% other. Despite all of these religions, it's clear that Christianity dominates in the UK and as such we mark it as a slightly Christian country on this map. These countries also have Christianity as their dominant religion, with again the darkness reflecting how religious the country is as a whole. 
These countries have Islam as their prominent religion, with them primarily being found in the Middle East and Northern Africa. Buddhism is the main religion in a handful of Southeast Asian countries, while Hinduism is the most common religion in India and Nepal, and Judaism is the most common religion in Israel. You've also got a few countries where so-called folk religions are the most common, with many of these religions being formed on the basis of various other traditions from Buddhism, Confucianism and Taoism. It's worth also saying that there's one more category, the countries where the dominant religion is no religion at all. These countries include Japan, China, North and South Korea, Hong Kong, the Czech Republic and the least religious country in the world, Estonia. Okay, so you now might be able to answer that question from earlier. Combine this map with your knowledge of global population trends and you might be able to guess which religions are on the rise. Currently, 223 million children are born to Christian mothers every five years, compared to 213 million born to Muslim mothers. So there are more Christian babies today than any other religion. However, this trend is expected to shift over the next few decades, with Islam outpacing Christianity slightly by 2030 and significantly by 2060. It's easy to see why this change is happening when we look closer at birth rates. Currently, 24% of the world's population are Muslim and 31% Christian. However, 31% of the world's babies are going to be born to Muslim mothers, compared to 33% to Christian mothers, a trend which is only expected to get stronger as time goes on. It's not just births either. Looking at data from 2010 to 2015, Christians accounted for 33% of births and 37% of deaths, with a similar trend emerging for the religiously unaffiliated. When it comes to Islam though, births massively outstrip deaths, hence the growing Muslim population globally. Now, projections like these don't assume that all children will remain the same religion as their mother, because that's obviously untrue, with statisticians also taking religious switching and drop-off into account. Even this trend doesn't impact religions equally though. Religious switching is pretty common in many countries, with people in the West fairly regularly abandoning their childhood faith, hence Christianity losing 9 million followers between 2010 and 2015 due to switching. However, in other countries and regions, religious switching is far less common and even in some cases illegal. As such, Islam actually picked up 500,000 additional followers in the same time span due to people switching to the religion. That being said, the unaffiliated group grew the most, picking up 8 million people who turned away from religion altogether. So with these factors in place, births, deaths and switching, what can we expect the religious landscape to look like in 40 years time? Well, current modelling suggests that Christianity will just be the biggest religion in the world with over 3 billion followers or 31.8% of the global population. Snapping at their heels though will be Islam, with 31.1% of the world expected to be Muslim by 2060. So the top two religious groups are expected to stay the same, just with the gap between them narrowing significantly. By 2060, Hindus are expected to be the third biggest group, rising from fourth today, with them representing 14.5% of the global population. Making way for them are the religiously unaffiliated, who will see their total number increase but their percentage fall, from 16% today to 12.5% by 2060. Also declining are Buddhists, dropping to 4.8% by 2060, and folk religions falling to 4.6%. That's all we have time for today, but hopefully you found it interesting to unpack the state of the world religion today and how it's expected to change over the next 40 years. I would tell you to comment below what you think, but the comment section on a video about religion scares me a little, so I'm not sure I'll actually be looking. Anyway, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.